The uh, mayor of Seattle, um, Mayor Drunken, I call her, um, she said it was going to be a summer of love. They were having street festivals. These are kids expressing themselves. Then all of a sudden, the angry mob got mad at her. They showed up at her front door. What's the first thing she did? She called 911, okay? Andrew Cuomo came out last week and said, no, but these protests are okay. The kids are just doing what they do, and they're expressing themselves. So protests good. Presidential rallies, no good, okay? And... Uh, other people are coming out now and urging these wackos to continue looting and rioting and, and demonstrating for a cause which has, to me, um, lost its focus. And uh, someone who knows even more about this stuff and more than me, Fernando Uribe joins me right now as he does every Mon Money Monday. He's one of my money guests. He's a great friend of the show. He's the host of Politically Direct on Insider NJ, faculty member at Bergen Community College. And uh, Fernando, a little earlier in the show, I put together a video that contrasted Barack Obama um, endorsing Joe Biden and put, you know, his, some of his greatest flubs in between it, which was kind of humorous. But there's no joke here that Obama is urging young people um, to keep protesting. Well, John, listen, first of all, thanks to have me back on again. I always love being on Money Monday with you. Um, listen, Barack Obama, like many liberals in our political climate, John, are like the poster child for hypocrisy. Because for eight years, let's, let's be very fair, did we ever hear a peep about pancake syrup, about statues, about streets, about monuments, about sports teams, for the love of Christ? Not a, not a peep. Uh, listen, most Americans didn't even know what Juneteenth was from 2009 until, until the early parts of 2017. And again, many liberals, as always, give Barack Obama a pass. And now what he's looking to do is encourage people taking to the streets to protest. And listen, that's their First Amendment, right? But we know what's happening with a lot of these protests, John. They're being very disorderly. They're being very disruptive. They're being disrespectful of our brave men and women in blue uh, on streets all across America. And quite frankly, it's insulting because People must think that the internet doesn't exist when it comes to Barack Obama. Um, you know, even something as simple as, you know, when he took a photo op in front of Mount Rushmore, that was, you know, CNN and everybody was salivating over themselves about how wonderful uh, of a moment this was in American history. But the minute that the president of the United States uh, decides to have a rally in front of Mount Rushmore and remind people about the virtues that make this country great, about what these four men did to enhance the greatest experiment in democracy, no, they're, he's vilified by the left-wing media. And quite frankly, I know a lot of people are tired of the double standard. Yeah, I saw a contrast yesterday on social media where they were, we were talking about when Barack Obama went to Mount Rushmore, they said it was beautiful and majestic and all this other stuff. And then the other day when Donald Trump goes there, they're showing like these Native Americans were trying to block the road and the fights between... And all they want to talk about is how the people didn't have masks on. It wasn't beautiful and majestic when Donald Trump goes there, but it is when Obama goes there. There's a crazy, you know, double standard out there. Um, but, yeah, I said it earlier in my open. Why did we... Well, Barack Obama was supposedly our first black president. How come we never heard of Juneteenth for eight years? Yes. And now we're hearing about it now. How come? Well, listen, again, it's just it's a reminder about how dishonest the liberal media is. And one of the things that Barack Obama is really trying to convey with these Facebook lives at home is to remind people why protesting is important. You know, can we remind people also that during his eight years, we saw the incident in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We saw the Trayvon Martin incident. We saw uh, what happened in Ferguson, Missouri, in Baltimore, Maryland, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in New York after the Eric Garner case. And not once did the liberal media ever have an outcry about what's Barack Obama and the Justice Department doing. Never once did I hear him putting forward the attorney general to talk about an executive order to address police reform. All I heard was a lot of chatter and the liberal media giving him a pass. Say what you want about the president of the United States, but Donald Trump, you know, directing Attorney General William Barr, put forth an executive order to address police reforms. It may not be complete right now. It may not be as comprehensive as people would like, but at least it's a start. John, did you ever hear about Barack Obama standing in front of the Oval Office or in the Rose Garden talking about police reform? Not once. And the liberal media never called him out on it. It's just it's so intellectually dishonest of the media. 
that quite frankly, more and more Americans are waking up to it. Yeah, no, what I do recall is um, long before he was vice president, Joe Biden actually bragged about being the author of the 94 crime bill, which put exorbitant amounts of minorities in jail for very small amounts of drugs and, and you know, small crimes where people got like 20 year sentences. And nobody talks about how Donald Trump um, signed the first step back that let a lot of these people jailed under Joe Biden's law out of jail. And it's just crazy double standard out there, Fernando. No, it is. And, and, and to even make it worse, I mean, there's rumors circulating that Kamala Harris most likely is going to be his vice presidential running mate. Does anybody forget that uh, Kamala Harris, as the attorney general of the state of California, incarcerated more people of color for petty offenses. And again, if you're expecting the liberal media to call out Joe Biden, as you alluded to, with the crime bill in 1994, or Kamala Harris with her horrendous record as attorney general, we might be waiting until God knows, until who knows, maybe the Mets win another World Series. I mean, it might be that long, John. <laughs> well, look, uh, let's, uh, let's not get to the Mets because uh, that's a soft <laughs> subject with me, you know. But sure, uh, I get it. I, we get are, it. I am looking forward to the start of the season, though. I mean, at least there's going to be something to watch. I don't know how Absolutely. long we can watch it, but usually we get about, you know, 50 or 60 games where we can root for the Mets, and then they're kind of out of it by then. So this might be the perfect dose for us, a 60-game season, yeah. they may, you know, we might be good. Absolutely. A short season, you know, someone gets hot, they can uh, run away with the title. It's that simple. No doubt about it. I like the staff. Um, let me ask you this. Aside from, um, you know, being a great friend of ours and on the show with me every week, um, you also host Politically Direct on Insider NJ, and you work over at Bergen Community Cal College. I'm hearing from one of my buddies who's a professional college counselor. He said that he's never seen a time like this where parents can actually call the college and get discounts on the price. He said that colleges are hurting right now. They haven't, people don't want to pay the full freight because they don't know if their kids are going to be in school. Um, is, 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 tell me, I got two, this is my first year where I'm going to have two kids in college at the same time. Should I be calling their colleges right now and asking them for a discount for this year? Well, I can't speak for any other institution in New Jersey, but I know that where I work at Bergen Community College, uh, until further notice, I mean, it, it, you know, virtual learning will continue. So uh, it's putting, you know, my kids in, in a, at a stark disadvantage. And I think at the same time, it's putting parents uh, in a real quagmire about what to do for the fall semester. Again, term bills are going to be uh, expect to be paid sometime this month in July, as, as, as it always is with the calendar. Uh, but I, I believe parents have been reaching out to the college. I know some faculty members have, that I've been talking to off the air have said to me, hey, you'd be surprised how parents are reaching out to not just this college, but universities throughout the state. Now, how successful they're going to be, John, remains to be seen because there still isn't an exact consensus, at least here in New Jersey, about what to do with higher education. Not every college has agreed to continue virtual learning. Some have actually gone forward and said they want to actually open the campus up in September. Uh, again, it, it might put a lot of students in precarious positions. Parents themselves are concerned about the, the safety of not just their kids, but also of other family members, especially if kids are going to be on campus exposed to other students. We don't know whether the social distancing guidelines will continue, whether or not face masks will be required. Again, there isn't a consensus here. And I know that Governor Murphy continues to get scrutiny because of this, because of not a well laid out plan. And it's just something that really perpetuates the narrative that COVID is overwhelming us at every level, not just in government, but in our daily lives, John. All right, we got a minute left here, Fernando. The jobs report was quite positive the other day. Um, what do you think this really means going into the election? Well, I would say I think it's a great start because we saw over 4.8 million people added to payrolls. And the industries that were have been hardest hit during COVID, which include hospitality, and also medical practices, dentists, doctors, not just general practitioners, but specialists have also been able to rehire again. And I think it, it's a good sign in July as states continue to reopen throughout the rest of the summer as we go into the fall. I think it'll be good news for the president. And it's what he can run on. Again, Joe Biden can't give us anything about, about any sound economic policies. He was part of an economy for eight years that doomed us. And this president, listen, like him or not, he was enacting policies that were reforming the economy and keeping it strong pre-COVID, and it'll happen once we normalize a little bit here in the States, John. 
All right, we got to leave it there. Thank you so much, Fernando. You're the bomb. Thank you. Thank you. Check out Fernando Uribe on Politically Direct on Insider NJ. His uh, podcast is blowing up. Thank you, buddy. Really appreciate it. Thank you, John. All right, we're going to take a quick break right here and come back with the WTF as a wrap up.